Okay, here we go. Five things that'll grow you back up when you're in a regression. Ready? When I'm feeling small, when I'm feeling little, what I need is someone or some group who is objective and not involved in my regression to give me attention. Attention. The problem with attention is most people don't know how to give it and most people don't know how to receive it. Here's what attention looks like. Somebody calls me up and says, John, I'm regressing my face off. My wife is leaving me. My lover is gone. I am feeling five years old. This is what attention looks like and sounds like. That's code for I'm here. I'm here. Here's what most people learned attention was. Oh man, I remember when I got fired from my job. Hell man, I went through some shitty times. And when my first wife left, I thought, fuck me, I'm going to die. But you know what I did? I, and this is what you should do. Uh, you should join a di uh, divorce recovery group. And by the way, uh, uh, you know, I got this therapist that you should see. You give advice. You try to, we try to fix we try to take care of them, we try to make suggestions, and they've never asked for a one, by the way. But in my regressed state, you've called me, I regress, I think you want more from me than I'm able to give, but it's, I, so I regress, and then I think, you know what, really, I know exactly what I should say here. And what I should, in, a, in, a, in an adult state, I just go. <coughs> Number two. You might remember the play Death of a Salesman where, where uh, Linda Lohman says uh, about Willie, attention, this man needs attention because the worst form of regression is suicide. And she says, attention must be paid to this man. I love that line. And in Mary Oliver's poem, she says, I don't know what prayer is. I do know how to pay attention. And I thought, you know what, if in this lifetime I could learn how to pay attention, I'll go the next lifetime for prayer. If the Hindus are right. If the Baptists are right, we're fucked. <laughs> <clears throat> number two, number two, empathy. When I'm regressed, when I'm tired from being on the road, I don't need you to tell me it's going to be all right when I'm regressed. Now, you can tell me after I'm grown back up. I just need some empathy. Empathy is very often confused with the word sympathy. In this culture, especially in the South, if you felt what another person feels, you were considered to be a very kind, compassionate person. Not crazy and codependent, but a kind, compassionate person. Empathy in the dictionary says, I understand what you're going through because I have had similar experiences myself. So if I call you up and say, you know, uh, my child just moved, uh, moved out of the house for the first time and I'm in a regression. Well, you may not have ever had a child, but if you've had a loss of some kind, you can probably empathize with me. In the dictionary, sympathy says, I feel what you feel. Well, I got news for you, folks. If I feel what you feel while you're in a regression, guess what's going to happen to me? And, buddy, I got enough pain in my own life to sustain me for the rest of this lifetime. I don't need to feel yours, too. But when I went, first went into counseling back when I was, well, 30 years ago, I thought you were supposed to feel what your clients were feeling so you could be a good therapist. Well, my God, when somebody would have a baby and they were my client, I would have labor pains, too. <clears throat> uh, empathy looks like and sounds like this. Ready? Man, keep on talking. I'm right here. I've been down the road to loss a few times myself. See, I don't need you to tell me a whole lot of stuff or recite lines from the, from the big book or the Bible or anything. You know, I just need to know. Somebody right now has some idea of what I'm going through. Now, you will watch and you'll see how sympathy is so regressive. Sympathy regresses. Empathy grows up. Watch this. Now, now. You shouldn't feel this. I know you're in a lot of pain. I feel your pain. Most people will say, fuck 
you. Get the hell off of me. You know, and you'll see this sometimes like at, at a bereavement place or a funeral where two people are being buried at the same time and, and somebody just buried a husband of 25 years and somebody just buried a child of four years. And the 25-year uh, loss will come to the four-year child loss and say, I know exactly how you feel. What's the response? Very often, it'll either shut them down, regress them further, or they'll go into rage and anger. You couldn't know how I feel. Don't tell me you know how I feel. You were with a husband for 25 years. My child has only been here for four. Now, had she walked up and said, Phew, if you want to talk, I'm here. Good. Could we please talk? You're empathizing with me now. Okay? Does that make sense? Third thing that will grow you back up is time. So time sometimes will grow you back up when nothing else will. Wallace Stevens said, sometimes the truth depends on a walk around the lake. I can't tell you how many times in my lifetime I thought I knew the truth about the situation while I was in the midst of my regression, whereas if I had taken Mr. Stevens' walk around his lake, I might have discovered a deeper truth and one that was a good bit more adult. And I didn't take those walks. I didn't take that time. Sometimes I just need to say to a loved one or a friend, you know what, we can't resolve this 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 week. I need some time. I want to be able to hear you. I want to grow myself back up. I want to talk to you like an adult. It's going to take me a while. I'm going to need some time. Honey, I'm going to go for a walk. I'm going to go for a drive. I'm going to take a ride on my bike to my favorite place and see if I can't grow myself back up so that I can talk to you. One time I was at a conference in Michigan and uh, I gave sort of a similar talk and a guy came up to me at, at lunch and he said, I want to thank you for something. I said, what's up? He said, for the first time, my wife said something to us, to me in my 25 years of marriage to her that she's never said before. I said, what is it, bud? He said, well, after your talk, we sat down and she said, honey, I need to talk. And he said, honey, I'm so regressed that I need a little time to grow myself back up because I want to be able to hear what you have to say. I said, okay, so what did she say that was so different that she's never said before? You know, she said, okay, take your time. When you're in a regress state, sometimes we take time in a regress way. Fine, I'm out of here, right? That's not the kind of time I'm talking about. This is when you catch our regression and say, you know what? I'm so small right now. I'm going to go take a walk. I'll be back in an hour and a half. And if I need to take longer, I'll call you and tell you I'm going to be longer. But here's one thing. If you don't remember anything else out of today, regression loves company. If I'm going back to kindergarten, if I'm going back to adolescence with all those pimples and awkwardness, I'm going to take somebody with me. And it's usually going to be the one that's most handy, right? You're regressed. You know exactly what to say or do or not say or do to regress them. Uh, time. Fourth one. Fourth one is um, <clears throat> appropriate touch or contact. When I'm in a regression and I'm feeling small, appropriate touch can grow me back up, help grow me back up. But inappropriate touch will do what? Continue the regression, take it further. And it happens all the time because people who are doing the touching usually touch people the way they themselves would like to be touched during a regression rather than finding out how the person who is regressed would like to be touched. You look like you need a hug. Get the fuck off me, man. <laughs> That may be what you need when you're in this place. I need just a pat on the knee. That'll help me grow back up. Oh, I thought it was a hug. Because when I'm in a regression, that's what I want. See, adults ask questions. Regressed men and women think they know. But appropriate touch is only the kind of touch that you want at the moment of regression, regardless of what kind of touch you had 15 minutes ago. Ask. 
always ask. And sometimes appropriate touch can be physical space. Right. You're in the right. presence. Right. Like that's that's right. Way off. You know, if you'll just stay here with me, that's the contact. Touching me with your eyes. Uh, for like uh, Alden Nolan says, every, every uh, uh, touch with the eyes is a kind of kiss or something like that. Just look at me while I'm regressing. That's all I need. So that's why I say touch or contact. Um, like when I'm, when I'm working with folks and they're really regressing, sometimes I might say, am I sitting close enough to you or am I too close? Because I want to enhance the process. I don't want to exacerbate it, right? So touch and contact is, is really tough. The problem with touch is this. Well, first of all, the problem with time is most of us don't feel like we have enough of it. Uh, and then the problem with touch is, is that most people in this culture are either touch phobic or touch starved or both. So like sometimes I really want to be touched, but because I'm in such a regressed place around touch, because I got the hell beat out of me when I was a kid a lot, I still have some issues about being touched, you know. So even though touch, to, you might think touch might be something that would grow me back up, sometimes it's something that will aggress me further because I have a little bit of touch phobia. Now I got a sad piece of news for you is much, most touch phobics marry or live with touch starved and vice versa. Am I right? Yeah, yeah, it's God's little trick. <laughs> God's little trick. I've never had two touch phobic people well. <laughs> live together before. Get off me. Yeah, you get off me too. It just doesn't work. <laughs> it's never happened. It's never happened. Never will. So, you know, and then and the touch starved when it's saying, oh, please touch me, touch me, touch me. Why don't we just go with somebody who can do it, you know? We have to instruct them and teach them how. So touch is a problem. The last one is emotional release. We'll grow you back up every time. Emotional release can range from everything from this right here to screaming, yelling, crying, pounding, writing, throwing things, cutting wood, all these things that I, I've done and some of you have done, that it may take more exaggerated forms to get that feeling of equilibrium, back to adultness, homeostasis, whatever the hell you want to call it. So it doesn't have to be a big, huge emotional discharge. It can just be a sigh or a yawn or a stretch or a, or a gallon of tears. I don't know. So, I'm going to show you all how to do this thing today, but uh, are there any questions about these five things before I go on any further? I've left out so much stuff. Yes? Well, you were saying regressed people love company and they'll bring you down with them. But are they consciously aware of no. that they're bringing you down? Before? No. There's two forms of regression that I write about in the book, conscious regression and trance regression. When in my first book, I was in a trance regression about being left. I would say things and do things while in that trance that I didn't even really know consciously I was saying and doing. I said, you've got to come back. You've got to come back. I'm falling apart. I'm sobbing. I'm dying. I'm going to die if you don't come back. Do you hear those words of, of a 30-year-old 30, uh, 30 man being abandoned now? I'm going to die. Only your mom can kill you if she leaves you when you're two or one. Your girlfriend at 30 can't kill you but it sure damn feels like it. I'm dying, and I can't tell you the, 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 the prostrations and the emotions that I went through with that woman trying to get her to come back to ease my pain of this regression that I was in and that I'd been in all my life. And I'll never forget what she said, and it began my career of what I've been doing now for 20 years. She said, John, this can't be all about me. She said, the pain in you is too great to be about me. She said, I don't know what it is, but my sense is, is you have feelings in you that's been in you about being left, and now you're putting them all on me. And she said, John, if I came back to you, I think it would be one of the un most unkind things I could do. And I had no fucking idea what she was talking about. 
I was in a trance. But somehow or another, that was enough to prick me. And I thought, I don't know what she means, but I think she's right. This can't be about her. If it had been about her, I would have treated her better than I did. So this wouldn't have happened. So conscious versus trance. Many of us are in trances, uh, trance regressions about money, about sex, about fame, about alcohol and drugs, about men, about women, about having children, about not having children, about fathers, about mothers, about our intellectual capabilities, our artistic capacities. We're in trances about these. Okay? And their trances are as many and varied as there are people to live them. I've just named a few. So, if it's big about something that was said or not said, if it's big in you about something that was done or not done, it's probably more about you and your history, me and my history. And guess what? I can't know all hundreds of your history. So I asked folks when I started doing these conferences to take the detour. Here's the way the detour works. Somebody comes up and says, John, John, I need to talk to you right now. I say, please take the detour with one of my assistants or one of the people here I've trained. <clears throat> so they would go out. <clears throat> the detour method consists of these questions. What are you feeling right now? Number two, what does this remind you of? Is there any place, any time, any person that didn't respond to you when you needed or, or pay attention to you when you really needed it the most? What does this remind you of? Little detour here? What did you want to say to her? What did you want her to, what, what'd you want to say to her? Next question. What do you need to say to John Lee right now? I can swear to you on a stack of Bibles, nine times out of ten, if it's done well, and it usually is done less than 15 minutes, which is what y'all gonna have. If it's done well, they'll say nothing, mm. nothing. I got it. It wasn't about John. John's just doing the best he can teaching. You know, he's just, you know, he's just, he's regressed. I'm regressed. I think I'll extend him a little compassion. And or the one or two times out of the ten that it does happen, they'll come up to me, uh, VJ or Connie will say, well, then go talk to him, and it'll take three minutes two minutes instead of two and a half hours and then still not be satisfied right all right here we go ready what are you feeling now what does this remind you of what would you have liked to have said or done to this person or had them said or done to you what do you what do you need to still talk to this person and how are you feeling now that's the last question I didn't give you a while ago how are you feeling now my wife says something or does something and I feel five years old, 12 years old. The straight line would be I'm going to go back to her and demand that she fixes me. That's the straight line. The detour says I got to be responsible for this myself, but I may need to elicit the support of others. So I'm going to call you and I'm going to say, this is what she said. I'd like to tell her to go fuck herself. I'm fed up with this goddamn marriage. I want out of this goddamn marriage. And you're going to say to me, what does this remind you of? <laughs> this has been a true blessing. Thank you all for listening and working with this.